Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about event ID number two in Sysmon, which is file creation time change. Now, this is a very old technique. I think attackers have been doing this since the inception of Windows and T4. Uh, in fact, I even have some old code that is almost two decades old. One of my first interpreter scripts where I actually used this technique to hide my actions from a forensics incident response team. So what you guys are seeing here is a copy of WinEnum. I think this is the first of my batch files, BB scripts that I actually ported over to Metasploit back in the day. Uh, I think it's actually 18 years old and it's based on code that is almost 20 years old or more. And here you can see what I'm do actually doing is I'm grabbing all of the different files that I was executing on the machine. I'm copying over the check disk, access time, modification time, and creation time. And then what I'm doing is I'm doing what we call back then a file stump. I'm hiding my actions on those files because what used to happen back in the day is that incident response teams, what they would do is they would go in, they would find this initial piece of information, an initial clue, and they would grab that timestamp. And then they would get all of the list of the files on the machine that were around that time. And they used that to actually track what type of behavior could have an attacker have executed on the machine. Now, nowadays with SSDs, uh, sometimes this information is not logged on Windows client machines, um, VDI by default it is when it sees a virtual disk, but with SSDs and NVMEs, Windows just to save some of the um, execution time or speed of the file drive, it will not update the last time that a file was accessed, but the creation time is always going to be there. So what I did on this host is this I created the file create time event type. I set it to exclude, apply this configuration to the host itself. So now when we look at the host and we want to see the configuration, if it was applied, I just do sysmon minus C and we can see that the configuration was actually applied. Here we have our event type, file create time. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use psgumshu to list the, uh, the fields out of one of the events. So I'm going to do get sysmon file time and i'm going to select the first event that comes up and here we can see that what we're actually logging is the process good the process id of whatever application modified the timestamp of a file and it's telling you hey the original file timestamp was this one and it was changed to this other one so we see the previous and the current one and who was the user that did this. Now, in a regular Windows environment, what we're going to see is that a lot of applications are actually going to be performing these actions on the host. So we can take two approaches. We can either target specific folders and exclude all of the normal stuff, or we can just set it up to just monitor for all modifications and then we keep updating all of those exclusions there's going to be a bit more noise but i think it's going to be a bit more flexible also so we have both approaches there that we can take i'll leave that up to you which one do you want to take but if we start looking at some of the exclusions which is an action that we're going to be taking no matter what so let's take a look at the host itself so I'm going to be using PS Gumshoe again. Now this is a very simple host. So what I'm going to go and do here is I'm going to select the image. What is the process that is actually doing the modifications? I'm going to then do a unique to get a list of all of those processes that are modifying other stuff. And when I look here, I can see that I have logon UI is one of those, runtime broker, explorer.exe, I have svchost.exe, I have also here a search application, I have Visual Studio Code itself, Chrome, 
I have Microsoft Edge. So I have multiple applications here that are actually modifying the creation timestamp of multiple files. So a quick rule would be just to me move this over here and I'm going to do export no convert to convert to sysmon rule. And this is going to give me a very basic filter set that I can actually just use as an exclusion. So I can just go inside of here, grab all of this, copy it, go here into my configuration file. I can paste those exclusions now. And what I would do is I would just fine tune this a bit more. Uh, for example, here we have a version number. So quickly what I would do here to prevent this to not be valid, if the version number actually updates, I would put a colon over there and then I would do contains all. That's my operator. Uh, same thing here. I would just grab this section here, which is going to be kind of like a random string. I would put a colon there. Same thing here. I would put a colon to turn this into an array, and I would just do contain all. I would go inside of here. It's just operator to contains all. Same thing for this one. Contains all. And let me save this. I'm going to now apply this configuration. I'm going to do sysmon minus C all time. It applied. I can confirm it. Sysmon minus C. And it's going to be there already for me. Now, if we want to look at other examples, one of the things that we can do is we can go into sysmon modular. And Olaf actually has here exclusions for OneDrive, for setup, Slack. He has also an include if you're going to kind of like limit the amount of data a bit and you want to target user folders and temp folders. You have two examples here. In my opinion, a better one is going back into Sysmon modular, going over into process creation. And inside of process creation, he has a bigger list, which is of all of the different locations where a file can actually be stored or written by a regular user. So let's look into that. So on common locations, here we go. And this is going to contain all of those locations where a file can actually be dropped and be executing from. So on my image side, what I would do is I would add this different locations inside of there. And more than likely, I wouldn't need to do those exclusions but again, I'd rather just kind of like normalize and test and then through multiple iterations where I'm just looking at threat intelligence data from multiple vendors for my specific area. What are the actors? What are they doing? I'm going to grab all of those TTPs and I'm going to simply emulate those attacks and validate that my configuration is working and that is covering all of those different actions. So as you can see, this is a very simple one that we can execute. A lot of attackers actually don't do this to hide their tracks nowadays. In fact, some of us who are old school, we tend to do it. I think only seen it in one or two nation states uh, type of attackers that people say, oh, this is a, probably a nation state doing this. They have done some of this advanced stuff, but regular ransomware crews, APT49 and some others, um, I haven't seen this action from them. Again, it doesn't mean that they're not doing it. it, just means that we haven't detected them performing those actions or seeing that capability in the tool sets that we have been able to capture. Now, I hope that you have found this information useful. And remember, if you are liking this series and you like all of the videos, help us out with the, uh, with the YouTube algorithm and just give us a thumb up, a like, and that will really help us uh, promote these videos to other people. Again, if you have questions, also remember to comment. Thank you and have a good one.